Welcome to Idea Factory and today we're going to be talking about copyright filters and why I hate them and why I really like them. There are lots of technologies out there at the moment that are trying to address copyright. For today, let's just con concentrate on copyright filters. Now, these are copyright upload filters that we're talking about now, and also, to some extent, the way that copyright content owners can draw and find and then dictate how their content is then used further down the line. Before we talk about that, let's have a short intro. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, no, because, uh, yeah, before this video was made, I didn't think about the copyright and... What is it? about copyright filters. Well, let's talk about YouTube for a start. And there's a lot of stuff out there and you've probably heard about it. And I know there's a lot of creators that are really annoyed about the content ID system. And okay, content ID is nowhere near perfect. I'm pretty sure YouTube is aware of that. And I'm sure they're gonna try and make it better as they go along. You know, things don't always start off perfect. Uh, but YouTube is still a platform that you can still use be grateful for that because without the system that they put in they could well have been shut down so um, let's see copyright filters so the EU has passed a, a new directive a directive being a guideline that has to be followed by the member states uh, and the member states now in the next two years have to within their own laws and put together laws that are going to enforce companies to follow uh, their directive of copyright filters. Now, copyright filters are quite controversial for a lot of people and what you should know about them is that basically um, you upload something, the filter can find copyrighted content within what you upload and then it basically turns on a little red light and says, oh, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, no, 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 you cannot use this, or, hold on a minute, uh, someone else owns some of the stuff that you're using, so, uh, hold on, we're just gonna contact them. Uh, so, contact them and come back and say, oh, yes, we own that. Sorry. Yes, we own that content. We would like it taken down. Yeah, okay. Ah. Ah. No, no, you don't own that content. Uh, you can't take it down. Really? So, let's get this clear, shall we? So, just to explain this, let's have two sides of the story. So, on one side, you've got the content creators. So the content creators, what they really want is they want their content to get out there. That's fair enough, right? We all want to try and get our little mark on the internet. Yeah. But then, on the other side of the coin, you've got the record labels. And the record labels and the artists, what they really want to happen is they want to be getting revenue for the work that they've already done. Sound fair? I want to make money for what I've done. You can make money on what you've made. Yeah, I suppose so. Fair enough. If it has to be that way. That's the way it should be. I want to make money for what I've made. So actually, 
Maybe I should be wearing a hat too. Okay. That was a really cheesy clip. I'm so sorry. Okay, so we all know that we're basically from the same side of the argument in a way. So, where do we go from here? Well, basically, you've just got to respect each other with it. So, if you're creating a piece of content and you're going to put it out on YouTube, you want to have like a backing track to it. You want it to sound good, right? I mean, yeah, hopefully this sounds good. No, no, maybe it doesn't. I like it. So, you want it to sound good. So, you're going to you do your best to try and make it look good, sound good, make the content useful, that sort of thing. Um, but the music, obviously, <laughs> not everyone's got the amount of time that it takes to put put into creating a really nice soundtrack. I mean, most people you know, don't even know where to start. So here's a place to start. If you're looking for music and you have no budget and you just want to get your video done and you want to get it uploaded onto YouTube, there's a very simple way around that you can go to the YouTube Audio Library. Now, the YouTube Audio Library has a lot of music. In fact, what I'll do is I shall just sit over here. This is the YouTube Audio Library. YouTube Audio Library, that's where you need to be. Uh, the other cool thing about the Audio Library is if you get there, uh, you'll find YouTube Audio Library in your Create Studio in YouTube. If you if you go on there, um, there's a, another section underneath it, um, which I think is permissions or something. Um, you can search for different tracks. So if you've got a if you've got a music track and you want to know whether it's copyright protected, um, you can check it in there. But the safest way um, to deal with this in the first place is just go into this library and find a track, download it, and use that. Um, nice and straightforward. There's a lot of different things on there. There's loads of different styles. Um, you can have a quick look. See, you'll find something is. Yeah, perfect solution really, on a budget, free music, YouTube provide it, upload to YouTube. Only thing you've got to be careful of is if you're planning on uploading your content somewhere else, um, you can't use that everywhere. You can use that on YouTube. Now, if you're going to upload onto, let's say, Facebook, then Facebook, here you go. <laughs> Facebook has their own audio library as well, so just make sure that you're putting the right music onto the right platform, because otherwise, yeah, it's going to get pulled up by someone. Um, YouTube and Facebook, they're competing for video at the moment, so I don't think Facebook's going to be very grateful if you put their their library on YouTube, and I don't think YouTube's going to be very grateful if you put YouTube's library on Facebook. But if you want to avoid that, obviously you've got other music libraries, so um, I use a music library called Epidemic Sound, uh, or Epidemic Sounds. Um, yeah, they have a really good, really good library of music, amazing library of music. And for not very much a month, uh, content creator, I think it's something like 12 euros a month or something, um, creators can use it on all of their platforms. Um, you should check it out if you have any questions about it because you know licensing is never straightforward. So if you've got specific questions, if you phone them up, you can phone them up. That's one of the really nice things. Get back on the telephone, talk to them, or you can email them or message them on a pop or something like that. Um, but I like talking to them on the phone, They're very nice people. But you don't have to go and pay for it. Like I said, um, if you're careful, you can go and use the YouTube Audio Library, the Facebook Audio Library. You'll find lots of copyright music, copyright free music out there. But basically, <laughs> for those purposes, practical purposes, that's what you need. That's all you need. Just, just go do that. Um, if you need something different, you're gonna have to read into it a little bit more. I'm really sorry. So here comes the other part of Content ID. The other part of Content ID, there's a fly. How did you come from? Sorry, where was I? Fly. Okay, other point of Content ID, covers. <laughs> content ID might not pick up on your covers, but if you do a tutorial or something with a guitar and you want to teach someone how to do a riff, and that riff is a famous riff from a famous song, it's quite likely that a company is going to come along, like a record label, it's going to come along and say, hold on, we, we, own, the, we own the rights to that music. Um, actually, we represent that author. And uh, the likelihood is, is that they're going to monetize your video. Or they're going to take it down. Um, and if they do monetize it, they can either monetize a little bit of it, so they might take some of the royalty away, or they can take the whole lot of it. 
and actually there's no independent sort of judiciary on this. Uh, YouTube, in fairness, is supporting some fair use creators. Uh, now, fair use is a whole other world that I can explain another day because it's, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to have to try and understand that right now. Let's just work on just getting the stuff up there, and then we can worry about more complicated issues later. So, yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, we were talking about guitars. Okay, so uh, I've got a prop. Hold on. Ah. So if you've got a guitar and you want to teach someone how to play the guitar, if anyone would like to do that for me, I'd be very grateful. I don't actually play a guitar. So if you're going to put up a tutorial on how to play the guitar, maybe play a riff or something, then. Uh, you can put it all together, but actually, when you play that, then the record company could come up with it and say, eee, "No, sorry, we're going to monetize your, we're going to monetize your video." Uh, time and effort put in, kind of wasted. Um, so, for you guys, I'm sorry to say, at the moment, there's not much that you can do about that. Now, you know, it's early days. It's early days for uh, content ID. It's early days for copyright filters. I'm sure this is going to become a thing that's going to have to be talked about at some point. It's going to have to be addressed technology-wise. So yeah, no advice for you at the moment, guys, because uh, I can't see a way forward right now, which is a real shame because uh, it, it could affect you know things like freedom of speech in the future and stuff like that. So be careful, be aware of it. Don't ignore it. Just don't ignore it. You, you don't want to ignore this. Um, this is why copyright filters and copyright two different worlds um, yeah take care thank you very much for listening to me babble on and clone myself uh, and not play guitar uh, maybe one day I'll play guitar for you who knows I haven't got any clever way of finishing off this um, this one so maybe ah I know what I'll do right are you ready <laughs>